Michaela Dominguez is a physics student who works and volunteers in outreach. Carmen Corbella is a grad student in industrial engineering with a specialty of electromechanics. Joshua Barrios Perez is an electric engineer and is studying a master's in astrophysics and also works at the Canary Islands Institute of Astrophysics. Their talk is called TIDESAT, an experiment about free optical communications. And TIDESAT is a project from the Canary Islands in Spain. It is the first satellite by students from the University of Laguna and the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. I'm not good at Spanish. The main objective of this project is to do an experiment about free optical space communications. Please welcome Michaela, Carmen, and Joshua. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, excuse us if you're a bit nervous because you all have like great projects and we want to be at the same, you know, same level. Uh, yeah, like you are so great, all of you. So, <laughs> um, okay. So first of all, we are the Sad, as she said. We're a group of students. Um, oops. This is not what I was expecting. Okay, and we are mainly from University of La Laguna. We also have people from University of La Laguna. And Barcelona, Madrid, Valencia, mostly because they left, like they were first in La Laguna and now they're doing masters uh, abroad or, or PhD and also in Milano. Um, okay, first of all, to understand, our project, and we have to know the background, not only of our history, but of the whole uh, investigation that works in the Canary Islands. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, is it? <laughs> well, um, Canary, Canary Islands is famous for two uh, great observatories over here, one in Tenerife, one in La Palma. One in La Palma is uh, uh, um, dedicated to night observation and the one in Tenerife is uh, to sun observation. Um, yeah, it uh, all started because it has great skies, very dark, but also it uh, has um, it is it has a layer structure and so it is very stable. And yeah, you have to do some corrections, but it's better to observe there because it's uh, far away from land and yeah, we, you we don't have very, a lot of light pollution. We even have uh, a law that protects the dark skies in, in both La Palma and Tenerife. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty, right? <laughs> um, okay, so when we started, Planning about, we thought that our project had to, uh, oh, okay, something to do with with astrophysics, and, and we knew that the next generation of telescopes will be the 30 meter telescopes, and we wanted to do something about the uh, adaptive optics, uh, so we wanted to well, we wanted to study. Uh, this is. Uh, Charles Piazzi Smith is a Scottish astronomer that in the 19th century went to the Canary Islands, uh, financed by the Royal Society, to study the skies over there. Uh, yeah, dark skies. He built this, uh, he went with like donkeys with a telescope to the top of the island. So it's like a lot. Uh, okay, so we wanted to study the sodium layer, the atmosphere, sodium layer of the atmosphere, um, and by that I, we wanted to be looking at the edge of the of the Earth. So, yeah, we worked on this for a few months, and we decided that it was not something that we could do in one unit CubeSat and Leo. Leo. So our dreams were crushed <laughs> and we decided to pursue our secondary mission that we wanted to put a light in the sky so we could measure uh, the spectrum and we will know how the atmosphere is working the time. Uh, but uh, of course we didn't want to just 
yeah, for the light, but only also do a little bit more. And we decided to do free space optical communication uh, between a CubeSat, a one unit CubeSat Leo, and the robotic telescopes that are going to be in the, well, they are in the observatories in Canary Islands. Okay, uh, we applied, <coughs> we applied uh, last week for, uh, to the Flyer Satellite uh, program uh, to improve and, uh, and also to the CubeSat um, uh, trainings in S Academy to improve our knowledge about the satellite because our university is very good in terms of astrophysics but not in terms of uh, aerospace uh, engineering or space science or this kind of things. So, <clears throat> for us, it's very, very important to, uh, show, to share our new knowledge about this, small but new knowledge about this, and uh, as the same, uh, for example, other share, share the information with us, for example. Uh, at the beginning of our project, the most important, the most important uh, reference and inspiration for us was the uh, XSAP team. XSAT <laughs> team, because uh, they share uh, with every people uh, the information. And for us, it uh, was very easy, it was not easy, it was hard, but it was very easy to, to uh, understand the different subsystems, the, the, the mechanism, and all the philosophy about the satellites, because at the beginning we don't know nothing about the, the, the satellite. We know uh, things about the stars and these kind of things, but not the satellite. And we uh, understand we need to continue with this uh, philosophy. Uh, in particular with the uh, Canarian society, with all the world, but in particular with the children and the teenager of the Canarian society, because we'll, uh, we'll be the next generation, and it's, it's very important. Uh, we are the first step of this uh, scale, but they uh, will be the next generation of maybe take the sat two or take the sat three or maybe another project. Okay, uh, it's, it's time to talk about the configuration. Uh, remember, our first uh, inspiration is uh, let's uh, sorry uh, XSAT because uh, and also let's uh, from Italy uh, because uh, we need to uh, bright as uh, very bright stars. Okay, artificial. <laughs> stars and, and our uh, configuration uh, use uh, four, um, four LEDs, for, for pow very powerful LEDs, are not exactly the same but are very similar because uh, we, have an, uh, we have to consider certain uh, turbulence or uh, certain problems about the, the atmosphere extinction, okay, and we, we want to, to use uh, a more uh, um, warm uh, lead than, than they, but are very, very similar. <coughs> uh, our, our structure uh, will be uh, do-it-yourself <laughs> for, for us uh, at the workshop of the Institute of uh, Canary Island Institute of Astrophysics. Uh, also, the, of course, the payload. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, to talk about the payload uh, later. <coughs> we, we, will, we will be we will have uh, four, uh, sorry, five uh, solar panels, okay, uh, to to give all the power and to to uh, give uh, to save all the energy into uh, the batteries. We are uh, considering different options for the batteries. The, uh, their options uh, using uh, two lithium batteries and four uh, ferrofat batteries will uh, will be a, a, a good option. But we are considering different options. This is not the, the, the last step. But it's a, it's a very good option. And um, our uh, COM system is, will be uh, from Endurosat <coughs> to, use, uh, the, um, to use the UHF and BHF uh, um, ranges uh, because we, we want to use the radio amateur uh, frequencies. Okay? It's very important in our project. And, um, and the OBC will be a, a, Q, a Q7, Q7S from CFOS because we don't have space to put a 
bigger one, a, op a really open source OBC, and we, we have to uh, search a very, very small uh, OBC to, the, to, the, to do this project. Okay, it's time to, oh, to, to talk about the, the, the payload, the, the LEDs, this LED uh, will be powered by uh, four hard uh, IGBT, it's like a musculate uh, MOSFET, okay, more or less, and, um, and it uh, power the, the flashes, okay? Okay, uh, very critical for us is the optical running station, of course. We want to bright at the, at the LEO orbit, but we have to receive it, the, the pulses. Um, the concept is very similar, very, very simple. This is not our uh, prototype because we, we are designing the prototype, but this is uh, for uh, this paper, but the concept is, is similar. A robotic telescope, semi-professional uh, telescope, okay, with a huge aperture, okay, to collect all the photons, uh, to download the data, okay, with a photodiode, a very fast response uh, photodiode. And another, not in this photo, but another smaller telescope, wide field of view, to do the tracking, because the telescope will be completely robotic and automatic, okay? The telescope point uh, are um, to, to the area uh, we, we uh, yes, for the expect, yes, yeah, sorry, <laughs> uh, expect uh, to see the satellite, and when the satellite will be a certain altitude, uh, start the, uh, sorry, this, oops, sorry, a header, okay, I start to flash a header, a certain frequency different than the other stars, okay, the main frequencies of the other stars to, to different the, this, our uh, star, artificial star, uh, than the other one, okay, after a few seconds, uh, the data will be sent that, and we receive it using the main, the main one, okay, the photo the other. Uh, well, about error correction, we are going to use turbo codes and polar codes. Uh, turbo codes are the most uh, that are using in the space uh, industry, but uh, now the market is uh, turning to use polar codes, and we think that it's very interesting for our project to try to use this type of codes because it adds an extra value for our project. So we are going to use both. Then uh, we have, well, some of you know Pablo um, Cruz. Uh, he's mentoring us with uh, Alberto and the Amateur Radio Union of Spain about run stations, and we have uh, manufactured our own antennas, and we have connected uh, two islands, uh, Tenerife and, uh, and Gran Canaria, uh, both seen on a satellite, and then we have also downloaded telemetry from, from satellites. Uh, then, you know, Pablo Cruz is there. We went uh, last year to the other uh, workshop. And then we have also a website uh, application when we can, uh, yeah, very quickly, we can see the, all the parameters of the mission, uh, both uh, the ground station and also the satellite. And we have a collaboration with, well, they, yeah, they mm, help us, uh, Yak Tech, then these are their facilities. They have uh, clean rooms and a lot, a lot of things, and it's very useful mm, for the reviews of our documentation. Then we also uh, have collaboration with Radian. Uh, they are developing a terminal analysis software, and it's very useful for us. And finally, we have some agreements with, uh, in one part with Airbus, and in the other hand with the uh, Spanish Association of the Aluminium, and they are de yeah, developing some projects related with our satellite. So thank you very much, and thank for the organization too. Thanks uh, for your presentation. Um, one quick question around the open source parts of your satellite, because from what you can, I can see the tools that you use are proprietary, unfortunately. Um, 
but um, which parts of the satellite are going to be open source and what's the status um, of the publishing for those? Okay. Uh, we, have a, we have a problem about the time, okay? And we, uh, we, don't, we don't have time uh, to, to develop all the things and, all, and we don't have the necessary uh, uh, Moscow to complete all the open source um, mm, uh, subsystems uh, and we decide to do the most important for us, the payload and, and the power subsystem. Half of the power subsystem uh, do, uh, do it yourself, okay? Uh, open source and open with open uh, source um, philosophy. But the, for example, the um, the com uh, subsystem, the solar ar uh, arrays, probably, probably, and the um, OBC, and the on the OBC will be uh, commercial, okay? Will be commercial. If you have, a no you mean you mean proprietary, not commercial, because you can have commercial yes, open source. Sorry, yes, sorry, uh, uh, provide yes, uh, provide by ISIS or and by Endurosat, okay? But the the half the other half of the satellite will be uh, made by uh, by our, ourselves, okay, ourselves, and and we we want to share all the information with the community. Can I have to say a little bit like? There's some systems that maybe we cannot build by ourselves, but uh, the rest, uh, everything that we learn or everything that we develop will be published and uh, is currently being worked. Like we have the GitHub, and in the GitHub, uh, all the um, all the IT team they are uh, publishing every coding that they are trying to put to the the coding of the of the satellite or how they're going to do the tracking of the telescope uh, of the satellite. Sorry, so. Yeah, like everything we can and we're learning on the way uh, is going to be published. So that's the open source. But our project, this uh, phase of the project, is only one, uh, it's only had one year. Maybe along the years we can uh, uh, change, okay, to the other uh, subsystems. We don't know. Hello. First, uh, first of all, uh, great presentation. Um, can you elaborate more about the ADCA subsystem? How, uh, what instruments will you use for the pointing accuracy? Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. This is a very good op uh, question for us because it's our, our uh, critical. Uh, area and um, about the the uh, our critical subsystems. In fact, uh, we have a problem. We had a problem, uh, and we have a very uh, long debate about we have to use laser or LED. And in one you we cannot uh, point in with the uh, accuracy necessary to uh, use lasers, but. This is the reason because we have to use a, a white cone uh, LED to spread all the photons in a cycle uh, of Canary Island. Uh, our, our, asking your question, our uh, AC, AC, uh, sorry, this, AC, this, ACDS uh, subsystems uh, subsystem uh, will have a passive uh, magnet, okay, and one magnet torquer and uh, four uh, hysteresis bars to stabilize. Uh, but we are uh, working in, in this uh, in this um, uh, subsystem, and it's the worst area of our uh, satellite. Okay, we have to improve the the design in this. It's our weak point. So, as we have seen yesterday, there's an amateur um, community tracking satellites, optical tracking of satellites. Um, do you plan to? Um, provide the, uh, like a, um, guides uh, for them to, to be able to maybe decode or even decode and, and provide uh, data from your passes. They are also using, some are also using 
telescopes for those tracking, so it might be feasible. Every collaboration is welcome. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, uh, yeah, we probably will be very interested in sharing, like, the, yes, completely, yes. And also with Satnox, because it's, uh, this uh, Congress was very important for us. Uh, it's very important for us because we understand a lot of things, uh, we, we don't know it, and it's and incredible because uh, Sandnox is a, an, an incredible uh, uh, ground station to, to connect, and we, of course, and we, we want to we want to improve our uh, capacity or to to communicate by radio and by uh, optical communication. Okay. Okay. A final question. So these turbo codes, they are in the CCSDS standards, but I'm not familiar with polar codes. Is this, is this an open standard? Can I find this information somewhere? Is it in fact, I don't know if, if it's uh, open, uh, because it's, it's not my area. If, if, we, if you want, I can talk uh, about Jorge, okay? Jorge? <laughs> And, and he uh, can explain a lot of this code, but uh, I think I don't know if if the if this is a proprietary uh, code. But I know in um, ten years ago, Huawei uh, obtained the most uh, important uh, bit rate. Uh, is around uh, using this this uh, kind of code uh, around uh, 27 gigabyte per second. Amazing <laughs> for us, um, but if if you want more information about this, I can uh, talk with Jorge. Okay, thank you.